Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. So, first of all, so the defense has rested. Uh, no shock that Donald Trump didn't testify. As you said on Twitter, the last time Trump took the stand, his poor performance and arrogant refusal to follow court rules easily lost him tens of millions of additional dollars to E. Jean Carroll. If he does yep. it again now in the criminal case, he will send himself straight to prison. So... Not a shock, obviously, that he lied once again. Of course, he didn't testify, right? Of course not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I always thought that was a, a bit of a hollow threat or promise, you know, it was, or, or more of a uh, don't threaten me with a good time situation. I was sitting here hoping he would because I just thought that it would be an absolute catastrophic dumpster fire of, a, of testimony. <laughs> uh, and I think that he, I bet you he wanted to actually oh, but i bet I, I think his lawyers managed to talk him out of it wow yeah because he thinks he's smarter than everybody mm -hmm. um yeah. and also i mean he does it's no mistake that robert costello acted like such an a-hole that <laughs> has you know the only witness to testify pretty much for trump right I, have you ever in your every legal expert i've heard said they have never heard of this of a judge having to clear the courtroom can you talk about that a little bit that is an ex yeah that is a big deal like that is basically like i'm about to rip you a new one and i don't want anybody here for it yeah uh that was really something you don't get that very often um he was being a pouty peevish weasel and just like very disrespectful to the court in the process um somehow he actually managed to be even more of a jerk than trump has been while sitting in court and that's a high bar yeah well, and also, I mean, who would have thought that Michael Cohen comes out looking like the most credible witness here? Because they already and built... It was great. <laughs> right? I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't it, feel like great. Costello it, it, damaged him. It made... And it, honestly, it's Costello was not only the most unlikable person that the defense put up, because it's the only person they put up. He's the only witness that I think the jury's going to come out of this and be like, oh, that guy was a jerk. Right. Like that's like that's a tough thing to do. It's like you only put on one witness, and it's that guy. <laughs> like boy, oh boy. So yeah, talk about somebody the jury's not going to like. Even though Judge Marshawn cleared the room before uh, before tearing into Costello, the the, they, the jury did see Costello's behavior that prompted Marshawn to do that, and then for yeah. Marshawn to be like, all right, everybody out is definitely something that like the jury will pick up on and as somebody else on twitter said the other day like in a lot of these kind of cases when it's weeks the 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 uh the jury tends to get a little attached to the judge mm -hmm. and judge Marshawn seems like a pretty likable guy i don't it's not a good idea to do that with the judge that's a great way to get the jury pissed yeah. off at you so yeah. yeah i don't think i think all of that Actually, it's not that it's not even only that it didn't help Trump. Costello actively hurt them. Yeah, exactly. So they put on their own case. It was super short, and they made their and they made it worse for themselves. Yeah, Trump always makes things worse for Trump. Yep. Um, and also, yes. you know, you can join most experts here in saying Trump's lawyers' cross examinations are not good. A good cross gets the other side's witness to admit facts that help your case. Trump's crosses just try to make the witness look bad. The latter only works in PR. But Fox News and the New York Post aren't deciding this case. The jury is. Right. That's a great point. I mean, they had a ridiculous client with a ridiculous yeah. defense, but, you know, it, it, they also, like you say, it just was almost shocking how bad they were. Look, I'm not, here's the thing. I, I actually have decided I'm going to write this up after this case is over. And I'm not going to say what I want to say right now, but you know why? Because Stephanie, I don't want to help them. Right. I don't yes. want to help the Trump people. <laughs> yes. Everybody hold their so breath. So I'm not going to tell them what they should have done because there was an opening here to be able to do effective crosses of some of these witnesses, and they just didn't do it. So when when they're going to whine and bitch and moan and complain that the deck was stacked against them and this was all rigged, no, better lawyering actually would have really helped them a lot in this case, no matter which way it ends up going. I mean, I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going to get a conviction here. Yeah. But I think that the uh, the kicker is that um, the kicker here is that the Trump lawyers made the whole situation a lot worse.
They yeah. did not score the points that they needed to score in order to uh, stop the prosecution from getting to the finish line. Yeah, and we were saying it's like a mo- it's like any other sort of mob trial. Like, you know, Michael Cohen, first of all, was corroborated by a mountain of evidence. And secondly, he's like, yeah, I yep. crimed and lied for Trump, who is a criminal and a liar. <laughs> you know, like it's it's not like there yeah. were aha moments. And you, like you said, who records a conversation with their boss? People who are paying out of pocket to cover something up for their boss and want to make sure their boss pays them back. That's <laughs> right. who. And someone right. who knows their boss is a lying criminal. <laughs> they better record right. this. Right. It, it was it was a combo of not of Cohen already. He's written this in in, in his first book that he didn't trust Trump to handle it correctly and to pay him back for it. And he also was doing it so that he could reassure David Pecker that the money was actually going to get paid to them. Uh, So it was all of, it was all of the above. Um, And then there's the other thing that I love saying that I just wish the prosecution would say this. I haven't heard them say it yet. I hope it comes out in their closing. uh, Michael Cohen was on salary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who takes somebody that you already pay a salary to, give him a paycheck, and then you pay him additionally as a 1099 to reimburse him for the exact same type of services for which you pay him a salary? I know the How answer to that. How does that make any sense? When it he's, doesn't make any sense. When he's paying off a porn Stephanie, star you, to you. shut up during a foreign election. Know. Thank there you. I didn't even go to law school. Where, okay. Where, <laughs> where, 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 Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Okay. Um, Yay. So I saw one piece I wanted to ask you about, about Trump lawyers facing difficult decision that could lead to change in hush money charges. Trump's lawyers could ask the jury to alternatively consider misdemeanor charges against their client instead of the 34 felonies he's now facing. They could gamble by requesting the judge instruct the jury to consider 34 misdemeanor counts. Can you explain that? Yes. I thought so. <laughs> so th- this is where the this is where the rubber really hits the road on this case. I actually expect them to do so. I've always expected them to do so, and that's going to that will definitely make this uh, next couple next next week or two potentially more complicated. Uh, it could cause the jury to deliberate longer. It could even lead to a result that we will not like. Uh, I think that the key here is effectively. The, the Trump lawyers have a decision to make. If you charge the jury that that's an out, you're kind of signaling to the jury that like he definitely committed the misdemeanors. It's like that's effectively what you're kind of like you're kind of conceding it. If you're if you're the defense, you don't you have an impulse to say no, 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 we didn't do anything wrong. But if you give them the out to say it's misdemeanors, that's actually a really good outcome for Trump. Yeah. So I don't know why they wouldn't do that. I think I've always thought that they will. That they're going mm. to say, like, look, you have the option to say these were misdemeanors. Now, for everybody listening, what's the difference here? It's that uh, it's that falsifying in the second degree is a misdemeanor, falsifying in the first degree is a felony. Falsifying in the second degree is just any falsifying, which they've got them dead to rights. It's yeah. so obvious that it was falsifying. It's not even funny. Falsifying in the first degree requires falsifying in service of another crime. So you have to say it was to cover something else up. Now, the prosecution's theory here that they're that they're pushing is that it was to cover up the campaign finance violation. That doesn't mean you have to charge him with a campaign finance violation. You just need to be able to say that there was intent to cover up this other this other potential crime here of the campaign finance violation. And why is it a campaign finance violation? Because he was ponying up all this money as an in-kind contribution to his own campaign right. to help his presidential campaign and didn't report it to the FEC because you're not going to go reporting to the FEC. Oh, hello, here are our expenses for the month. Oh, yes, we paid off some porn so, stars. Right. You're They're... not going to do that. So, And they didn't. Yeah, so, so there's there still jail time from what I'm reading. So uh, the felony counts, he could get what amounts to a life sentence, uh, right? Uh, but the they're saying it would be less risky to ask a jury to consider misdemeanor charges. Uh, it would be at most two years in jail. But there's still jail, I guess. Maybe. I got to be honest. I think that it's, if it's a misdemeanor, it's going to be, I think, a lot tougher to to end up saying that he ends up getting prison time. It's not impossible, but it's a much harder road yeah. Yeah. Uh, in terms of in, in terms of how that gets sentenced. Um, I think that we should really be pulling to see this get get 
get yeah. convicted as, as a felony I de- count. I desperately, um, and then, yeah. I desperately need to add convicted felon to the line of twice impeached right. ra- rapist. Go ahead, business Correct. fraud. Yeah. That's right. And, and then even if we get the conviction that we're yearning for here, it's going to get appealed. I doubt they're going to have him be put in prison pending the appeal. He's probably going to be uh, kept out of prison pending the appeal. And then how quick does the appeal happen? So I've always cautioned everybody with this matter. It could be the first to hand a conviction. I don't think it'll be the one to send him to prison the first time. I think that the other cases have a much stronger chance still, even with all the problems. And I've gotten a lot more bearish about how everything else is going. Um, but uh, but I do believe that it, this is it's going to be a longer road to see this be the thing that sends him to prison. Mm. I admit to being that person that only wants to hear what I want to hear. Uh-huh. So I didn't really even listen to anything you just said. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you lost me the minute that. you said no, no jail. The, the thing that the thing that I come back to now is that I think that you know that a lot of these things are rigged. And yeah. they're rigged in Trump's favor. Yeah, like, exactly. The thing is that why does he run around saying everything is rigged? It's because he has rigged it. He exactly. put all of his pets on the Supreme Court. Mega donors have been bankrolling their lifestyles. We have, we have corruption in the Supreme Court that we've never seen in the history of this right. country. We have other judges on the bench who also seem to have uh, hidden yeah. agendas. And it is it is completely poured buckets of sand into this process. <laughs> The net result I always want to leave everybody with is that we can't, I came into this year thinking the courts were going to do their job. I'm now hitting a point where I'm thinking like, screw it. We just have to go and we need to vote, 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 vote. We can't wait for anyone else to save us. We got to do it ourselves. I opened the show with that. We got to double, triple, quadruple down on democracy real quick before we go. This is because how many times do we say Supreme Court, Supreme Court, Supreme Court? We were talking about how important it is to vote. And you said Samuel Alito supported Trump's coup and is now trying to make sure he is immune from being prosecuted for it. I mean, this is where we're at. Mm -hmm. What what do you suggest we do? I mean, that's the I mean, I mean, that's the thing is that. you look at Alito and his, his what he what he said during the oral argument on the immunity issue a couple weeks ago, and it is terrifying how ready he is to completely subvert the rule of law just to support his chosen candidate uh, and and his ideological kinsman. Weirdly enough, it, it, and Trump is their tool for achieve, achieving an ideological agenda. Uh, no, the end result is look. The Supreme Court ends up being a trailing indicator of where America is because you get you you have to get the presidency, you get the Senate, you get these people on and then they're there forever. They're there for decades. So we're stuck with people that were put in there by the bushes. Like what we need to do now is we just need to keep winning every single election we can. And And over the next decade or so, we're going to be able to push this boulder back up the hill. Yes. But this boulder has rolled back down the hill and is crushing us right now. We're just going to have to push it back up the hill. Yeah. We got to push for all of it. Term limits, expand the court, whatever we have to do. And all of that. I believe it. I, Yeah. yeah. 100%. 100%. Tristan, you are just a rock star. When there still is no answer to how you're so handsome. I don't I know. I think his parents had something to do with that. Probably. Yeah. All right. You're fantastic. Maybe. I hope. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Tristan. You. Thanks, Tristan. See you next time. Thank you.